it just is, for but it just phone. goes on. I don't where care. This employee is rattling off all the features of the Evo that's better than the iPhone, and the person says, I don't care. They just absolutely want it. So we'll post some of that online. We'll provide links to it. Um, it's a great video. Just search for iPhone 4 HTC uh, Evo yeah. on uh, YouTube. Now, there's a, there is one thing, though, that um, that is, is, is iPhone 4 uh, and not Evo, and that is the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, video conferencing. Um, you know, iPhone was the first to come out with the, um, you know, the camera on the front of the device, a camera on the back of the device, and you are able to actually see uh, the person that you're communicating with um, you know, on your screen, but then down below you can even see your face um, you know, broadcasting and, and communicating back to them. And obviously this is not new news, I'm just bringing it up because we mentioned the video, and they have been they as in uh, uh, Apple has been pushing this nonstop on evening television um, instead of the there's an app for that commercial all it is is the video conferencing where it's the um, uh, boyfriend girlfriend and the girlfriend gets a new haircut and the boyfriend comments on it or it's the father daughter and the daughter gets braces and the father comments on it there's the wife husband and, and he's on Iraq or something yeah all of yeah. them they're long distance sort of relationships and the wife says you know that thing which we're all you know okay we know what we're talking about and you know it's it's happening and oh my god you know I'm gonna be a father all of that stuff is because of the video conferencing so that is one thing that Apple is really tying onto and really grabbing and making sure that everyone knows about that that seems to be their kind of superior product than you know all of the other things the larger screen size or you know uh, when you're talking about data plans or coverage we're talking about the carrier there's a difference and everyone needs to know that there's a difference between the device itself and the carrier that provides the data um, we're not going to get in, into that discussion today but just know when you're talking about what's better iPhone and or Evo or iPhone and incredible iPhone and droid you're also not only talking about the device but you're talking about the carrier that provides the service for that device very important that's another week yeah and absolutely um, we actually we do a lot of iPhone developments I think we counted the other day and we have released uh, over 16 apps for iPhone um, but at the end of the day I do a lot of biz dev I carry around a Centro on Verizon's network uh, because I get connectivity and you know on the tunnels in Baltimore and the subway in DC um, you still get connectivity whereas on the iPhone you absolutely don't um, and on AT&T Singular around here there's some definitive points where you just know it's going to drop your call um, so definitely the carrier is important but the iPhone or a modified iPhone is actually supposed to come out for Verizon in the fall it's rumored rumored totally rumored yeah actually not the fall but next year January um, of uh, 2010 okay. is so not not too far away but again um, there's been uh, contradicting reports about whether or not there's a stronghold with uh, Apple and AT&T and that at and in a um, agreement for another year or two um, you know there's there's a lot of speculation but it would be very interesting very very interesting if uh, Apple was able to put out a iPhone like device on Verizon's network or any other network um, for that matter, that wasn't jailbroken. That was a true, you know, carrier could walk into a Verizon store, buy an iPhone or an iPhone type device. Um, you know, th that's interesting because the iPad is also another game changer. Um, whereas, you know, Apple came out with the iPad that's only available in AT and T, and in true Google form, they're like, we can't be shown up. They are now releasing a pad or tablet device that's going to be specifically run on Verizon, a lot like their Droid not as specific to Verizon, but I think they have more customers with Verizon than they do with um, you know, T-Mobile or Sprint or any other uh, mobile carrier. So it's gonna be interesting to find out you know, what, what Apple and Verizon does. Obviously a lot of people um, choose Android, I believe, yeah. over, uh, over iPhone uh, because of the carrier itself. And you actually touched on one more thing that's recent news uh, that happened this week is that before if you jailbroke your iPhone yes. you could be fined fifteen hundred dollars by the FCC for jailbreaking your iPhone and Apple would have had to prosecute you now they didn't prosecute anybody um, over that so nobody had to shell out the fifteen hundred dollars but now the FCC actually ruled or I guess uh, the courts ruled that they can't charge the fifteen hundred dollars for jailbreaking your phone and the reason before there was a fine is because 
you're basically jailbreaking your phone to get access to proprietary operating system stuff. Um, but now they said that you can't charge at 1500 but um, Apple can still deny you any further support if you do jailbreak your phone. And they, I'm sure they fully intend to. It's possible. But at least you can't get fined, so it's one of those Right, things. it's not <laughs> technically illegal to jailbreak a device. Um, and, and it's funny that they specifically mentioned... 1500 would be, uh, would that be grand... What's a grand? Well, I guess it's not theft, so it's not grand larceny or anything. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's definitely a there's a, a, a big community of um, jailbroken devices out there for um, iPhone, iPad. So, um, what are the things that jailbreaking will grant you? That well, one thing, one thing that I think is the the biggest definitive uh, um, item is that AT and T put a lockdown on tethering your iPhone. Uh, you know, to use it as a modem to access the internet from a laptop, let's say, um, jailbreaking your device uh, hacked into that that stop, and basically once you jailbroke your device, then you were able to gain access to that and turn that option on. Now, since then, AT and T, you know, a year later has realized that everyone wants to tether. I believe the reason why they didn't before is because they were already having major data failures. So when we let when Zerfoss last summer went off and we we hooked him up with the uh, the MacBook and the iPhone and he tethered, he jailbroke the phone to do that? I guess. I don't know if he actually accomplished that because I think he was in a bad enough area. I think he tried, but it never actually oh, I worked. He had it working. So what does it take to jailbreak your iPhone? Uh, it's There's a couple of different um, breaks out there. One's uh, uh, Red Storm, or uh, another one's Black Rain. So it's software um, that you run. Software that you download, and then what you need to do is it doesn't always run with the latest edition of iTunes, for instance, because obviously Apple is privy to it and knows that something is going on. So, so they, if you they broke it, the you loophole. upgrade iTunes, then it, you wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, uh, you can. Okay. Yeah. So so it, it works with typically it's like uh, iTunes 9.1, let's say, and then your um, uh, um, iPhone device needs to be running like three three one two, whereas now we're up to four. When we ended, it was three one three, and the jailbreakers had yet to fully break into three one three. So um, it was three one two that you had to backgrade to if you had upgraded, and then you would download this program, uh, copy it over into iTunes, overwrite some configuration file, um, and then when you ran iTunes, I've never actually done it. Um, you know, so, but but that's kind of the procedure. And then once you do that, you have access to applications that don't have to go through the approval process. There's a whole other app store out there. No so, way. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. So you could you could tap into anything at all. So that's where the porn all. is, then, right? I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't know. Uh, yeah. What's the name of that store? Right. <laughs> so so, so uh, yeah. I mean, you can you can tap into. Um, apps that aren't in the App Store, that aren't approved by Apple, that aren't approved by AT&T. You can tap into the device, the carrier, you can change anything you want at that point. And so a lot of people have jailbroken their device to be able to do that because it's been so completely locked down by Apple, by AT&T, and they want to be able to um, you know, use the device. You know, they're, they're paying a lot of money, I guess. You know, A lot of people feel like, well, I'm showing out a few hundred dollars at times for this device. You know, I want to be able to do, it's my device. Like, Apple doesn't own it anymore. I bought it from Apple, so it's my device. I want to be able to use it. I think that's what they're saying. I don't know. I think at the end of the day, you're buying the phone but licensing the software. Uh, agreed. I'm sure that's the case. Agreed. So. Oh, well, that's what Apple wants to believe, yeah. Right. Apple well, you buy the phone and like, well, you do. You license the software. You right. You buy, software, you buy a yeah. laptop and you license, whether it's a PC or a, or a Mac, you buy the laptop, you own the... The, the hardware, the hardware, but, but, you but technically, all the right technology. Absolutely. Right, you still have a license key though to break in. So, you know, I mean, not break in to access the uh, operating system. So that's the big thing is that once you jailbreak, you're opening up the device to whatever you want. You can manipulate it. Um, there are apps out there that allow you to do anything at all. A friend of mine's got an app that um, allows you to remote desktop from your iPhone into a PC. Yeah, which is a hot app, but that's approved. No. Oh, that's jailbroken. No, the iPad. That no, is, no, that is the hot thing for iPad. Is it's, it free? There's an approved app that will allow you to remote desktop into your home computer. So what I've seen a lot of PMs doing is having their computer remotely with, you know, project or whatever hooked up or whatever, you know, PM tools are using, email for that matter. And then they're just walking around with their iPad 
and it's actually a remote desktop into their desktop 